happening now, why local leaders squashed a fall time festival that was slated for this weekend. Plus, Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sunquist joins us live for a one-on-one -on -one interview. Well, there's more clouds than sun out there today, but there could be a spotty shower. I've got the details next. The news at noon starts now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. A Jamestown man has pled guilty to a drug trafficking charge and faces up to 20 years behind bars and a $1 million fine. 27-year-old Shaquelle Coleman entered that plea yesterday. Coleman was arrested with another parolee on January 2nd for violating terms of their parole. Now, during a search of the two men, Jamestown police say they recovered $1,400 in cash and a quantity of cocaine. Coleman is scheduled for a January 21st sentencing. Well, Chautauqua County Executive P.J. Wendell's 2021 tentative budget presentation last night painted a picture of optimism for the next year after a challenging 2020. Wendell says he knows that county government will see its share of challenges in the year. He explains, however, that the county will rebound. These challenges are many, but I am very confident that the 2021 budget provides a plan for continued success in Chautauqua County. In summary, I leave you with this and something I have said throughout the COVID-19 crisis. My goal is to make 2021's comeback greater than the 2020 setback. Wendell's budget saw a 3% increase in the property tax levy and a decrease of 1% in the property tax rate. Meanwhile, Wendell explains that the budget calls for an increase in revenues by a half percent. Total expenditures, however, are expected to increase by 0.4 percent. He says the county services weren't reduced in his tentative budget, which still needs to be approved and could be potentially changed by the legislature. Well, President Donald Trump has repeatedly said he expects to have a coronavirus vaccine available to the public around Election Day. He also says he would like to see one near Election Day, and that might result in a face-off with a federal agency. John Lawrence explains. The Food and Drug Administration says no COVID-19 vaccines will be approved without passing its safety checks. Science will guide our decisions. FDA will not permit any pressure from anyone to change that. Sources tell CNN the FDA is thinking about stricter guidelines for emergency authorization of a vaccine, much to President Trump's annoyance. We're looking at that. That has to be approved by the White House. We may or may not approve it. Uh, that sounds like a political move. An FDA official confirmed to CNN that such guideline changes do go through the Office of Management and Budget Review. This comes as recent polls show Americans are skeptical about the vaccine process. One member of the White House's Coronavirus Task Force says he's willing to be vaccinated. If a vaccine that's shown to be and proven to be and, and uh, authorized by the FDA to be safe and effective, I certainly would take that vaccine and I would recommend to my family that they take that vaccine. President Trump says he has faith in the research underway and says the sooner a vaccine is available, the better. When they come back and they say that we have something that works and absolutely works and they're coming back with great numbers and statistics and tests and everything else that they have to come back with, I don't see any reason why it should be delayed further. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. The National Institutes of Health's director reports two more COVID-19 vaccines will likely soon enter phase three trials. Well, back here at home, a family-run fall attraction in the town of Busti will not be able to hold their craft festival this weekend due to COVID-19 concerns. Marshall Miner, who owns Pumpkin Town alongside several of his family members, tells WNY News Now that Chautauqua County Executive P.J. Wendell reached out to him yesterday about health concerns the festival could create. Miner says the news, which was delivered just two days before that event was slated to take place, was disappointing because his festival met all of the state guidelines for keeping visitors safe from the virus. In total, over 50 vendors and a helicopter ride starting at the Baker Street Extension location were slated to take place. 
Marshall's wife, Sarah, says that even though the festival will not take place, that destination will be open their normal hours this weekend, welcoming everyone in the community while keeping everyone safe. We ask that all of our patrons wear masks and maintain safe social distancing, especially when you are in closer range of people. But because we have so much space, people can spread out. People can run around and not be close to other people. And I think it makes um, families feel a little bit safer knowing that you're not right on top of one another. Now the family has also hired additional help to keep surfaces clean across the property. Each weekend, activities like pony rides, apple cannons, and a haunted house are available to visitors. There is also a variety of food choices like chicken fingers, french fries, and apple crisp on sale. Pumpkin Town is open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. with admission $10 per person. Seniors are $5. Children under 2 and veterans are free. Well, we thank you for joining us here for WNY News Now on this Thursday. Let's check in with the comments and say hello to uh, Jason. Good to see Wendy. Thanks so much for tuning in here today. Uh, great to see Julie, Chris, Charlie, David, Lisa, and Kirk as well. Hopefully everybody's having a great day. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. I uh, want to switch gears now and get a check of our first defense weather forecast. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter joins us with that. But before we get to the forecast, we oh want to wish Dakota a really big happy birthday. Uh, we appreciate your work, Dakota. You do, you, we work so hard, and especially during this uh, all this COVID pandemic, a lot of people don't know, Dakota actually has uh, been promoted of sorts and has been helping us in the newsroom, uh -huh. and you do such a great job. So happy birthday to you. Hopefully you can uh, enjoy your day. Well, thank you very much, and I'm waiting for it. I know there's going to be a practical joke at some point today. I know I'm waiting for Maybe. it. Maybe. But hey, you know what? Let's get right into weather. Live look over Finley Lake. Temperature already up to 70 degrees at uh, Finley Lake right now. And man, you can see just a little bit of the milky white skies with a little bit of the cloud cover. 72 was the high yesterday. We started the day at 52. And how about this record high for today? Was set back only a few years ago in 2017 at 84. And the record low for today is 26. Set back in 1974. And uh, right now we've actually rebounded nicely. 67 at noon hour with a southwest wind at 10. And the Humidity is up a little bit, so you might feel just a tiny bit of humidity in the air through the day. So through the afternoon, a mix of sun and clouds. Now, this is a slight uh, change in the forecast for today. There could be a spotty afternoon shower. We'll time that out a little bit later on. And again, the humidity up a little bit, 67 uh, to 75 today with a west wind averaging about 6 to 12 miles per hour. Uh, the uh, rain chance will time that out, plus a better chance of rain over the weekend. We'll talk about it in a few. Justin? All right, Dakota, thank you. Jamestown police are now seeking a different vehicle apparently involved in Tuesday's hit and run crash at the corner of East 6th and Pine Streets that hospitalized a 61 year old man. We warn you the video that we're about to show may be considered graphic in nature so viewer discretion is advised. Police released this video yesterday showing a small dark colored SUV possibly a Honda CRV or a smaller crossover. Detectives say that that vehicle left the scene, then turned east onto East 5th Street, where it continued onto East 2nd Street and turning west onto East 2nd Street. Jamestown Police Captain Robert Samuelson tells us that they believe the incident was an accident and not intentional. He says police are continuing their investigation and they ask anyone who may have information to contact them at 716-483. 8477. We have that and more posted on our site right now. Police say the victim sustained a broken ankle and leg and they were released from the hospital yesterday. Well, the Democrat candidate for New York's 23rd Congressional District is calling for federal assistance in bringing broadband internet to rural areas throughout the country. Tracy Matrano, a Penn Yan native, is call, who is challenging incumbent Congressman Tom Reed in November, held a coffee meet and greet yesterday morning at Stedman Corners Coffee on Fairmount Avenue in Lakewood. Medrano says the lack of broadband internet has stunted the overall growth of the district. I came out in 2018 on this point, that we can't revitalize the district without it, and we need it for education, for work, for the people who have lost their jobs, they may want to recertify in something and get back into the workforce, and they can't do it because most of those programs are online. There's no public transportation to get maybe to a community college or a certification place. 
So they need that we really need the internet. It's a utility. Metronel says that the federal government has assisted rural communities in previous years by helping them gain access to the internet. She adds that state officials should cease to give grants to cable and internet providers, but should give them to municipalities instead to invest in fiber optic. The Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office is warning residents that stealing political yard signs is a crime here in New York. In a statement to the media, Sheriff Jim Quatrone says so far his election, this election season there has been several reports of stolen signs. The sheriff says that taking a sign is not only a crime, but it could be considered suppressing free speech, a violation of the Constitution. Well, coming up next, Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sunquist joins us live to talk about several topics ranging from the hunt for the city's next police chief and whether trick-or-treating will take place this Halloween. Stay with us as WNY News Now continues. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. When you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading the WNY News Now mobile app. Stay up to date on local news, weather, and sports that matter to you. Plus, subscribe to breaking news and weather alerts from the team that puts coverage first. In addition, watch news as it happens with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back to WNY News Now. Joining us live on the program is Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sunquist. Mayor, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much for having me. First off, I want to ask about the uh, search for the new police chief. Uh, it's now been two months since Chief Harry Snellings retired. Are you close to finding a new candidate? You know, we've been working through the applications diligently. We received around 30 applications for uh, pol the police chief position, both internal and external. Uh, we put together a recommendation committee made up of members of the community, our city council, our police, our fire. Uh, and they've been diligently doing uh, Zoom interviews with about uh, 16 of those candidates. Uh, and it's uh, been back and forth. Uh, we've really talked about those. Um, our recommendation committee is really going to get in the, the middle of things to start to make some firm decisions on the top three recommendations. Uh, from there, once we have a, a top three ranked individuals, um, we'll invite those individuals to a final interview. Um, some uh, may be out of state. If so, they'll get a chance to come to Jamestown, uh, visit with our police force, our fire force, uh, and uh, do some final interviews with me. Uh, I will say that we are trying to work through this as quickly as possible, but this is not something that can be rushed. Uh, picking a police chief, which is really a pillar of a community, is a very, very important function of my job, and I, and I take that seriously. Uh, so as part of it, we want to make sure we've vetted everyone, uh, that our recommendation committee has vetted everyone, and that we make the right choice. Is there something specific that you're looking for in a new chief? Well, you know, we're looking for someone that's going to be very community oriented. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of community policing, uh, of bringing restorative justice uh, to our community, uh, of really focusing on, you know, healing the wounds that may exist between different pockets of our community and our police force. 
Uh, so we are looking for an individual that is going to be able to um, you know, start that conversation with the community that's going to be a strong uh, force uh, that our community feels comfortable just picking up the phone and calling that police chief. We had a great relationship with uh, former Chief Stellings, and we want the next police chief to have a very similar strong community relationship. Now, it has been over six months since this COVID-19 pandemic has changed so much. For you, looking back, how is the city doing with handling things? And do we know what's to come with this new normal that we're in? Well, yeah, you said that exactly right. A new normal is, is really the scary part. You know, coming into this job, I had about two months uh, of what might be a, a normalcy uh, and then jumped into really just dealing with um, having to immediately cut a budget, having to restrict services, having to you know, deal with a, a rising and growing pandemic in our city. Uh, we've done a lot along the way, and we've tried to ensure that we've kept our numbers low here in the city, and we've ensured that our city employees are, have stayed safe. Uh, so I'm very proud of that, uh, but I think that we're not quite sure what a new normal is going to look like even going into next year. Uh, there's still concerns about our kids in schools. There's still concerns about how we protect our businesses uh, and whether there's going to be another wave of this uh, pandemic. Uh, so with that, every day has become a new adventure in this office, trying to figure out where the next day or the next week is going to lie, uh, or even into next year as we try to put together our 2021 budget. I know uh, in the, the height of the pandemic a few months ago, we talked about the fact that coming into office, it was like two months and then you were hit with COVID-19, something yeah. that nobody has ever experienced. For you, do you feel like having that fresh approach and being a outsider to government helps a little bit in the sense that you can have a different look at the future and the way that we're doing things in government compared to somebody who maybe was in office for a long time who was very used to the way that things were run? Well, I think I first want to start off by saying that uh, even if you've been in government for a long time, no one was prepared uh, to deal with this international pandemic. And the truth is we are all trying to figure this out together. Uh, but I will say that uh, being a, a new mayor, uh, being able to reach out and connect and meet with other mayors, uh, even more so now with the pandemic, has been absolutely crucial to be able to have that direct connection to the governor's office, uh, to be able to understand what's coming down the pipeline so that our community is ready, and to be able to connect with our county executive and the other county executives across this region uh, so that we can try to figure out how do we all move forward together it has been incredible. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll say this, I think that now more than ever, Jamestown has become a very visible place uh, in New York State uh, as, a, as a city that's one to watch out for, because not only are we in the midst of a pandemic, but we've been doing some really incredible and unique things uh, that other cities are now looking at and trying to model. And we're very excited about that. Now, last night, Chautauqua County Executive P.J. Wendell unveiled his tentative budget for next year. Um, are you working on your budget, and do you have an idea of what things could look like? I, I know you've discussed with council and with the community that we would likely see some cuts because of the pandemic. Absolutely. So one of the most challenging things going into next year is what does a budget look like uh, to see those cuts? As you and your viewers probably know the city of Jamestown has been on a very stringent budget uh, year after year where there is very little to cut, very, room, very little room to move, uh, giving our legacy costs as well as our tax base. Uh, so going into next year, it has been incredibly difficult um, working with our team to try to put together a budget that's really going to continue to propel us forward uh, into next year. So it's been challenging. We've been working on it. Uh, we, our budget is due to the council and to the community uh, by October 8th, so we're in the process of trying to finalize that, put that together, uh, and get it ready and packaged for the council. Now, speaking of October, we've received a lot of questions about the future of trick-or-treating this Halloween. I know you and the city council have discussed it. 
Do, do you know where the city stands at this moment and will we be sanctioning trick-or-treating at this point or not? Well, as you know, uh, we put that on the agenda uh, to have the city council discuss it. Uh, and magically, the next day, the governor actually talked about trick-or-treating. So uh, I'd like to say we're a bit ahead of the curve, uh, but uh, we really just recognize the fact that this is something the city council typically debates and authorizes each year for trick-or-treating hours. Uh, as you know, the governor has allowed trick-or-treating. However, uh, we do expect that there will be guidelines put into place uh, by the governor's office. The CDC uh, alone has already started talking about potential guidelines for trick-or-treating, uh, as well as the potential for spread with trick-or-treating. Uh, so it's been an ongoing conversation with our city council. Uh, I would expect that you'd see a um, press release uh, coming in the next couple weeks in regards to trick-or-treating. Um, we wanted to have this conversation early on so that families could start to prepare now. Uh, but, you know, personally, it is a very large risk or potential for community spread. So, you know, I want all of our residents to think carefully about doing this. I know it is painful to not allow our kids to go door to door, uh, but, you know, we want to encourage that if you are going door to door, that you're doing it just in your neighborhood, just with folks that you know, and that you continue to wear a mask, maintain those precautions. But we don't want to see our uh, large amounts of kids going from neighborhood to neighborhood that could potentially initiate a community spread. Now, uh, you yourself have worked with uh, kids in the past as an educator, so I'm sure you have some insight uh, as to the good demand for this holiday. Well, what do you say to parents who do want to move forward with some sort of trick-or-treating event, but at the same time, like you mentioned, you have to keep certain safety measures in mind? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I really think it's important to say uh, to those family members, number one, this is a great opportunity to have some family time together, whether that's staying at home and celebrating or whether that's actually just working with your neighbors. Uh, you know, this is a great time to really talk about uh, trick-or-treating just in terms of a block or a neighborhood. Right? There's nothing preventing folks at this point uh, from kids going around their neighborhood, meeting with their neighbors, seeing each other, uh, and having a smaller uh, celebration. Those are the things that we're okay with. Those are the things that we'll encourage. Uh, but again, having large amounts of kids going from neighborhood to neighborhood, that causes some potential for spread. All right, Jamestown Mayor Eddie Sundquist joining us today. Mayor, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. All right, well, now let's get a full check of our weather forecast with Chief Forecaster, Dakota Hunter. Well, let's get right into that forecast, and the cooler air is gone. If you're a fan of Montgomery Gentry, you might know the lyrics to this song, Cold, uh, cool air is gone like a 59 Cadillac, and uh, it definitely is gone here. Look at where we were, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, essentially at the end of last week as we started uh, early this week into the 50s, and now here we are yesterday at 72 degrees, and we're going to add another 70 degree day likely today, and the temperatures are going to continue going up uh, for the next couple of days, but the bigger story is going to be this. We are running way below average for rainfall. Um, essentially, we've only had a little less than one inch of rainfall throughout the entire month and look at where we should be almost three and a half inches for this time of the year and uh, so you know if you've gone out and actually kind of studied your lawn it looks like concrete because I mean we just haven't had any rain but here's gonna be I don't think a saving grace today but this is a change in the computer modeling forecast for today this is the in-house computer model on future scan notice how it sparks up a few showers through the afternoon the chance is relatively small about 20 to 30 percent uh, chance for coverage today but again there will be a chance for a spotty shower mainly inland away from the lake shore that goes away if they ultimately do form uh, later this afternoon and tomorrow is going to be another fantastic day warmer and sunnier as well so the zone forecast inland areas today temperatures I think are going to be held down a little bit because of the cloud cover so we're going to go lower 70s across much of the area maybe uh, as often as the case when you drop into Warren County uh, maybe uh, upper uh, 70s there Lake Erie shoreline cooler today in the 60s because of that west wind and hey fall foliage updated yesterday by NYSTEC almost the entire state now is changing with the colors so I had to break out the little emojis right there the happy face emoji but if you really want the vibrant colors you have to go way up in the Adirondacks where it's already near peak here and it's already at peak up here in parts of the Adirondack Mountains so that is the place to be for the peak colors right now but pretty soon we're all going to be seeing some peak colors here uh, in 
just a couple of weeks here. First defense Doppler radar shows you really nothing across the area, just a few scattered showers near the banner up in Canada. But uh, again, there will be a chance for a few uh, spotty showers through the afternoon. This is the remnants of what was uh, Tropical Storm Beta. This is going to stay to our south. Our next weather maker is this system right back here to the west, out in the Midwest. That is associated with a trough and a cold front that's going to be coming our way over the next couple of days. So off to school tomorrow morning at the bus stop. Catch the sunrise. Lots of sunshine out there. 51 degrees, so no need for the sweaters tomorrow morning. And as the kids are coming home, 76, have the sunglasses and don't forget the masks. That's important as well. Next seven days of your life coming up right now. And you can see 78 tomorrow, 76 on Saturday. Lots of sun. We're getting into almost like an August uh, feel here as we go into the end of the weekend. And uh, we bring in a chance for a few showers Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And look at next Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, Justin, 55 as our forecasted high. So the cooler fall air will be making a return. All right, Dakota, I got to ask you to sit down if yes. you can. They're, they're telling me, they're like, tell Dakota to sit down. Thank you, sir. We, we appreciate you. And, and we wanted to take a moment here in the last uh, couple oh of boy, minutes. Oh, boy, here it comes. Uh, just to, to share our birthday wishes. And, like, for me, I, I, I think I can speak for, for a lot of people here. You know, you work so hard 24-7. And what a lot of people don't realize is every element of the weather forecast comes back to you, mm -hmm. even on the weekends, where Andrew will do an excellent job, but you built the system, and you've designed it, and you've customized it, and that's the type of work that we want to see here um, at WNY News Now. So I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you publicly for, for all your work. I, I, and the, 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 thing, the hard thing with this business is it's so fast moving that we don't always get the time to say thank you. So thank you for being a friend and for being a hard worker. Well, I mean, you know, I just got to say, you know, thank you to everybody in the comments who's, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, through the uh, happy B-Day wishes in there. I've been looking at those. But, you know, the thing I love about this is, you know, or should I say about, you know, essentially our company is the fact that, you know, when we hire people, we hire people and let them do their jobs, yeah. you know? And it's like, for me, when they hired me, they hired me to do my job, where it's like, you know, I have full control, and this is something that a lot of weather people don't have who work in traditional broadcast media, is I have full control over the weather office. So, you know, and that's my job, because part of my job is not just, you know, standing on the green wall for three minutes and telling you weather, which, you know, a lot of people think we only work three minutes a day. But no. in reality, I'm here in the morning checking model data, looking at upper air observations, uh, making all the graphics and everything, and obviously the web weather stuff that goes up, you know, especially, you know, on the day I write that here. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. And, um, you know, something I have is I have the ability to run the office the way that I want it to be ran. And that's something that a lot of uh, chiefs and a lot of lead weather people don't have the ability to do. Yeah. But uh, that's something that we have the ability here is that all of us who are in sort of like a management role, we're able to do things the way that we want them to be done. And uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of micromanaging. We just yeah. let people do their jobs and, and everything falls in place. I think that goes back to the whole community of Western New York, right? Is we're very determined and we're able to do and we have a vision and we take it all the way. We build new things. And that's what WNY News Now is all about, is trying to serve what is considered to be an information desert in some senses, mm -hmm. right? There's not that many places to get news here in Chautauqua and parts of Cattaraugus yeah. and Allegheny County. So we try to serve that. Yeah, and we're public servants, that's yeah, all we are. And, and I think a, a lot of times uh, that is forgotten mm -hmm. in journalism. And to that point of journalism in the last minute we have here, I, I really want to thank you because you've pitched in so much during COVID-19 and you've developed into an excellent journalist. And it's a role that I don't think we're gonna ever let you uh, let go from your mm -hmm. title. But uh, you, you've, you've wrote COVID update stories, you've uh, listened in to COVID press conferences mm -hmm. for us because we've been stretched thin because yeah. there was so much going on, especially early on in the pandemic when information was vital. Not to say today it's not as vital, mm -hmm. but we're finding this new normal and we're able to safely live our lives like we did before. So I just want to thank you so much for that and, and for working so hard. And, uh, and I look forward to working with you for the rest of my career. I hope you don't go anywhere. Well, hey, you know what? I'm close to retirement age, so. <laughs> you make that joke every day <laughs> and I'm never going to let you leave.
I don't get my severage package? Nothing. Oh, come on. Nothing. Dakota, thank you. You're welcome. Happy birthday. Thank you. We leave you with this live shot over Chautauqua Lake. We're back tomorrow with our TGIF edition and our pet of the week. See you then.